We're in the middle, about dead center of Nevada, almost 6,000 feet, Eureka, Nevada is the town just to the south, so we're about 15 miles north of town. Um, been here my whole life, and we expanded the operation when I got out of college. We're trying to be more efficient so we can live here forever, and our kids, if they want to live here, can continue. We've got limited growing season, and we, we irrigate for 100 days, whereas other places irrigate 300 days. Um, so we kind of have to make the most out of a small little time frame. Uh, there's not a, lot of, not a lot of room for error. Our stewardship really is focused, pinpointed right at the water issue, and it will continue to be. We started out traditionally with flood irrigation, maybe wheel lines, maybe even hand lines. That wasn't very efficient. We couldn't get the water to go on this gravelly ground very far, so we ended up switching to pivot irrigation to be more efficient, but the birds started out on top. We would irrigate from the very top of the pipe. And then this arid state with plenty of wind and, and heat and temperature, um, the water would just drift away. So we realized we needed to get down. And as the technologies got better, uh, you see the emitters or the nozzles get lower and lower and lower. But really, if you just get what we call mid-level, if you can get down to shirt pocket height, you're doing great. I mean, you're you're way better than being up any higher. But we're trying to get ultimate, the ultimate efficiency and stop uh, as much of the evaporation and wind loss as we can. And that's where we've ended up getting to this low, almost in the canopy if you can. If you can irrigate within the canopy, you're minimizing your evaporation. The name, that's the target, is, is pumping that water and, and using the electricity and the expense of pumping it to put it where it's needed not lose any and only put as much as the plant needs because you can overwater. Companies have changed and improved their technology uh, quite a bit also. Um, and the inside of this circle is more just of a spray. And that's, the, that's what we thought was really good for a while, but it, it spreads the water out wider and then you get more evapotranspiration the wider you spread it out. So we've went to this narrower Nowhere application um, configuration, and it's it's essentially flood irrigating with the pivot. Um, there is some benefit to stacking that water up in one place uh, on top of the soil drives it in better, I think. And these emitters actually aerate the water too, so you're getting some oxygen into the soil, which is totally beneficial. In, in general, we're saving 20%. It sounds like a lot, but if you were up where you couldn't quite reach the emitters, it's pretty easy to save 10% just by getting down or 15% by getting lower. The other, the part of that 20% is about, is management. I mean, five or 10% it is if just management. So once you start saving water and paying attention to how you're irrigating, then you have to retrain yourself on how to irrigate and what's best. So it takes a lot, it takes, it takes hardware and money to put that on the pivot, but one of the biggest things is you have to change your management and you have to, you have to re rethink, relearn this stuff. It's a challenge, but it's, it's rewarding. I mean, it, the systems have essentially paid for themselves in the first year. You generally will grow a little more crop. I'm going doing it at lower pressure, so I'm saving a little energy, but just being able to monitor the soil moisture and shut your water off some, I've, I've saved, saved a lot, and with our groundwater management plan, if we can't learn to save and get by with less, you're not going to be able to stay here.